hello guys welcome to a uh, another video today i thought i'd share with you two really old vintage cleaning machines that i've restored and got working again um both made by hoover um one is actually quite old and the other one is uh, not quite as old we'll start off with the uh, floor scrubber here um it's in a sort of a turquoise sort of color um, I haven't really had to do a lot to this really apart from just grease up the gearbox and uh, clean the, the brushes underneath which oh, I think four inch brushes there and they just clip on and off I've even got the polishing pads that go on as well so easy to maintain you literally just take them off and clean them Can't, not really a lot go wrong with that and also the uh, good thing about that is it's a handlebar switch so as soon as you lower the handlebar it um, turns on it, it, and you lift it up and it turns off it's a very unique safety feature for something that old and talking about how old it is it actually dated I think the date that was on it was um, the ticket that I saw was 1964 so it's done pretty well I mean it's a plastic rubber of aluminium casting and a a brushed mofa in there with brushes that had about an inch worth of material left on them so that should last another 50 60 years i should think which is unbelievable considering that i've literally just thrown my bloody dyson away 10 years old and a gasket went and plastic snapped and i just couldn't be a bother with it anymore i thought i've got much better older stuff that actually does the job so yeah um, i fitted a period plug from the 60s on it standard mk affair um so i can't really complain i paid a tenner for it at the market someone actually said to me oh you paid too much for it i thought yeah well you know 10 quid you can't buy a new floor cleaning machine for 10 quid and not one of that quality anyway uh, it's got a nice hoover bad proper thick rubber skirt there so that should uh, keep all the dirt in uh, next up we have a, I believe this is a 612 Hoover. Uh, it uses um, a uh, refastenable bag. Now the interesting thing is that in this day and age of recycling and all of that bull crap that they're talking about, Hoover actually, uh, actually patented the design of having a uh, reusable bag that you could literally just empty out and put back on again. And you could even put it in the washing machine. You know, it's... It's amazing, really, that that in this day and age when people use paper bags, they just fill it up with rubbish and they put it in the bin. It's so bad for the environment. I'm guessing that's why they make the Cyclone Hoovers now, like the Dysons and that, and the handheld sharks and that, that don't really use bags. They use it like a, a container, don't they? Anyway, I'm, I'm wandering on. I did repaint it in gold hammerite, which is what it, the colour of it should be. Uh, I didn't have the correct brown paint for the handle and I'm not going to spend out any money than I have to because I got this for nothing from a uh, donation uh, for someone who just didn't want it anymore really and they can't sell electricals at the charity shop so uh, they offered it to me with a load of stuff. Uh, yeah, so it's a Hoover 612. I've totally repainted it, polished the Bakelite hood. It's got a lovely little light under the hood as well. And... The, the amazing thing with this is the weight of it. It weighs an absolute bloody ton. I mean, I think when my nan was alive, she had two. Uh, the reason she had two was because she couldn't lug one up and down the stairs all the time. Uh, this dates, believe it or not, from about 1945 to 1955. So this is going on for well over 70 years of age now. And it works so much better than any modern hoover as i say i've literally just dumped the dyson because a bit of bloody plastic broke no plastic there all you do to take that off is you slide that and that pulls off the belt is literally just a one piece rubber belt slots in two little tags at the bottom there change the belt without tools um as you can see it says there the hoover cleaner standard sort of stuff so that his majesty the king not King Charles, not Queen Elizabeth, but King before that, that's how old this is. Has a side attachment there, which when you put something in, uh, attachment, it lifts up the little flap, disengages, uh, 
I think it actually lowers the wheels so that the roller's not actually brushing on the floor wearing the four out. This uses brushes and beater bars. Beater bars use obviously clue in the name to beat the, the carpet to get the dust out. This is sort of a similar action than what you'd have if you put the rug or the carpet on the washing line and physically beat the thing to get the dust out like they did years ago. But this is obviously on a much smaller scale. This beats the rug. Brush comes down to brush up anything. The brushes have worn down quite a bit. But, you know, for 75 years of age, you can't really complain. I mean, it, it actually pulls the liner off the floor in this room. So... I'm using this as my number one hoover now because I think it's going to last a hell of a lot longer than a crappy Dyson. So best thing about these, very eco-friendly really considering the uh, the age of the thing. It's built to last, it's built not really to break down. I mean when it did, when something does go wrong on it, the, the only thing to really go wrong on it is either a belt or a, um, a bulb in the, the hood here. I won't turn it on because it makes a bloody racket and... And, uh, yeah, it makes a bit of noise, and I've got a bit of a headache, but, yeah, it makes a bit of noise, but I tell you what, it sucks a bloody carpet. That one carpet nearly went in the damn thing. It was trying to eat the bloody thing, so, done all right. It, so I can't really complain. They're not allowed to make hoovers of um, that wattage anymore, either, because they have this eco-friendly rubbish that they came out of a few years ago. They came out with this thing, didn't they, to... Um, lower the wattage of the hoovers that were being sold and i think the only hoovers you can get now are silly crappy little ones that are about i think they're about 200 watts or whatever they're not they're not a lot hang on stop my music do my head in yeah so um that's about it really i say the hoovers back then were so much better so all I had to do was put a new wire on it. Someone did put a new wire on it, and it it was a horrible white sticky one, and they never even connected the earth, which obviously being a cast alley base, which it is, cast alley, it's ever so thick as well, so it weighs a ton. Um, you, you wouldn't want to get a shock off of that, so uh, I made sure to, when I put the brushes back in, and again, the, the brushes on it, there was plenty of meat left on it, it was about an inch, good inch, you know, there was more than enough bloody leeway there as well, and um, I've actually got, I might make a, a future video of it, is I've got a, um, I've got a Henry Hoover that I found in the skip, and someone threw it away, and they said, oh yeah, it did work, but then it suddenly it's making these sparky noises, and just cutting in and out and that and I thought well the first thing that that's got to be is the brushes and I had a look and for sure what had happened was um, I don't know quite know who it was but the uh, very clever person that was using the hoover never used a bag and was using it to suck up some very wet horrible stuff and of course that sucked into the motor which for a short time probably wouldn't have been a major problem but it corroded the brush holders and the brush holders that hold the brushes not being able to touch the armature meant that they were seized in a position because they're supposed to be spring loaded onto the commutator and if they can't touch the commutator they can't make the circuit and they can't run that's why the hoover was cutting in and out and it was on its last legs and the people thought that it was broken it wasn't actually broken it's just because of some moron that didn't know how to use a hoover i mean I would have thought most people would have used a bag and would have used it on dry surfaces only. You don't use a standard Henry Hoover or a Henry Pet Hoover to suck up water, as far as I know. I think you can get um, special Henrys for that, I think. Um, yeah, I see the dog's just chilling in the uh, chair there. A bit loves that Hoover. Just after I um, repainted it, the dog had a bit of an attack at it, of course it couldn't really do any damage apart from just scratch the paintwork, which is a shame, I have to touch that up at some point, although I can't really see the point because it'd do it again, um, yeah, as I say, when these hoovers came out, they, they were hell of a, quite expensive, but unfortunately this model doesn't have, and I'm not surprised for the age of it, it doesn't have the switch on the handlebar, but it does have the thing that locks the handle in place.
There's a start button just on the side there. So very high quality back in the day, really. You don't get them like this anymore. People might take the piss and laugh at what I've got, but I tell you what, it's going to last me to look till the end of my days, I should think. As you can see, model 612. The switch is just there. We've got a little slidey thing there for thick and medium carpet. As I said before, we've got an attachment thing on the side, which is... It's unbelievable, most people don't know that they're on there, but that's not the advanced thing about it, really. The advanced thing is that it's an upright. You know, most people get it the wrong way around and think, oh, it's so uh, advanced that it has a hose coming out of it. It's not, because the first Hoovers did have a hose coming out of them, and they were used for dusting and so forth. The, the, the innovation was the uprightness of the Hoover, but so many people take it for granted that that's what they think and the other funny thing is it's not actually a hoover it's a vacuum cleaner most people that they associate because the word is so ingrained in society that the word hoover means for every vacuum cleaner out there which yeah i can sort of get how that sort of happened over t over time really i mean you try telling that to my um six-year-old girl you know she doesn't quite understand why um it's not called a vacuum cleaner and the kids at school call it a hoover or whatever, you know, or a vacuum cleaner or a hoover. It's one of the two same things, really, apart from one is the brand that did it, really. Oh, I'm a bit tired because I've been up since four o'clock bloody cleaning at Tesco. They've got a very lovely hoover. They've got a hoover that doesn't, that no one seems to order bags for. I'm not saying any names, but no one's ordered any bags for this thing. And the um it says on the bag, do not overfill the bag, otherwise this could cause damage to the Hoover. And of course it's overfilled and no one has ordered any bags. Uh, they ask me to Hoover certain parts of the shop. I can't really when I've got a Hoover that needs more bags. And there's no bags to put in it. But that's not the worst of it. I actually worked somewhere where they had a vacuum cleaner that was so bad that on the wire, the live and the neutral were so perished they were actually touching each other. And on more than one occasion, it popped and there was a blue flash. But interestingly enough, it didn't trip the electric. I presume that's because it was double insulated and it didn't have an earth. But it was many blue sparks coming off the damn thing. And... Um, I did report this to the health and safety department about this Hoover that I was using at work and no one seemed at all interested and in the end we had an apprentice come in, uh, he was using the Hoover for a bit so in the end I just cut the wire off the damn thing and threw it in the skip. I got told off for that even though it was a severe health and safety hazard.